just grateful to be here tonight with Joseph Ekiochi. And um, this is another chance to hear stories um, about times that people have noticed God working in their lives and grace, God's grace working in their lives, and also um, even reflections on race, race in America. So Joseph, glad you can be with us tonight. And maybe we could start by just sharing a bit about how you came to know St. Luke's, just a little bit of your story. So, actually, again, like how Father Colin said, uh, my name is Joseph. Um, I'm original Congolese, and I live here in San Diego. So, the way that I came to know St. Luke's, um, Father Colin, I don't know. Um, I think I got your email. I don't know who gave it to you, my email. I think, didn't I get connected to Jaffrey first? I think you got connected to Jeffrey first, yeah. yeah. And then I think it through Jeffrey is the one who gave you my email or something like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So and that's that's how I got to know St. Luke's. And uh, ever since I started coming to St. Luke's, I've seen St. Luke's as a part of my family right now. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks, man. Yeah, Joseph's getting married soon. It's very exciting. And can you tell us a little bit more, like how long your family's been here? Um, you, you graduated from Hoover High School? Yes, um, my family been in San Diego for seven years right now, almost eight years. So I got it from Hoover High School in 2016. And uh, right now I'm attending a community college, trying to get my degree, so, mm -hmm. yep. Cool. Well, um, I don't know how much time you kind of had to think about this, but- um, I, can't, I can't hear your voice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know how much time you've had to think about this, but, um, do you have a story or two that you could share with us um, that could maybe offer us a little hope as we continue to struggle, not only through this continuing pandemic in our country, but now um, a deeper national reckoning with race and kind of our own roles in what has been the oppression of a people for centuries. Um, where have you noticed God working in your life in some of your most troubled moments? Could you give us an example of maybe one of the harder times in your life and where you saw God working in it? Yes. So actually, um, for me, I would say when I come to the state, I didn't speak English. So, and I didn't know how to write. I didn't know how to read. So it was a very difficult for me to get to navigate the community, you know, get to know stuff and um i think like i was asking god to help me um so i can uh, i can fight this berry you know living a place where you don't know the culture you don't know anybody you don't know the people so and you're trying to to um to get to know people and that was a very difficult you know, to get connected to people, that was difficult. How, how and, old were uh, you, 15, 16, when you came here? No, I came here when I was 17 and a half, almost 18. Okay. Yeah. And you did you speak any English when you arrived? No, I never speak English. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing, because so, now that's eight years, years ago? Yeah. What? That's it's like eight years. Eight years ago. Yeah, eight, eight, eight years right now, wow. yes, correct. So I never speak English. And I was trying to navigate, get to know the people, get to know the culture, get to get to used to the food, all those stuff. So it was not easy, but I used to pray to God, you know, to help me out. I even uh, remember, like, even coming to the U.S., I stayed in the refugee for 15 years. But again, it was not easy. And uh, being a refugee is like, is more being a prison. Hmm. Because at least in the prison, they can give you food. Um, but in the refugee, they can give you a meal for one day or two days, and they'll tell you guys to eat for like for one week. And uh, there is no any, anything. There's no internet. There is no, there is no voice. So there's no way like you can uh, express your feeling to anybody or to get to know people from outside refugees maybe they can provide you guys some meal but we survived through that 
Mm. You know, God is amazing, and uh, He has worked a lot in my life, yeah. and I really, really appreciate it. One thing that re I really admire about you is not only like how fast you were able to, for example, learn English, um, keep moving through school, how many jobs you've juggled, um, but then that you and your family have done so much to welcome and to help so many others in in your community um, do the same thing, you know. And I can't remember. Did you have you visited your refugee camp since you've been out, or that's something you still hope to do? Yes. Um... I should have recently, um, last year, I went to Tanzania, and the refugee actually is located there in that country, but um, they refused to give me the visa to go inside uh, after they find out I was, I'm original from, from that refugee camp because mm -hmm. they told me I'm a journalist, something like that, but mm -hmm. they never let me to go inside. Yeah. They thought maybe I'm, I was working with the government, but I told them I'm just trying to go visit friend who we haven't seen each other for a very long time, and then we left each other at a very young age. And I was trying to go see them because we haven't seen them, we haven't seen each other for a very, a very long time. Yeah. Eight years right now, we haven't seen each other. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that, but I just love the heart that you have for you know caring for others who have who are going through what you've experienced. And I don't know if you still have this dream, but I remember one of the first times we met that you had said that you had a dream of one day um, going back um, to the Congo and starting a business that could help other people too, maybe create some jobs. And I just, I love that. Yes, uh, that's something that I'm praying to God to give me the strength. So I cannot do that alone. Mm -hmm. And I always asking God to help me out. So that's part of my my goal, part of my dream is to go back and to give it back, you know. The fact that I came here in these countries, never even imagined if I would come to these countries like in the US, but by God's help, I was able to come in this country yeah. and uh, I'm able to gain a lot of resources that I never have a chance to get. In the past, now I'm using them. I'm also learning a lot, and I think there is more to give to the world. Yeah, I just wish, I wish there was a way that you could. Your voice. Uh, yeah, sorry. I I wish there was a way that you could, um, just be able to focus full time on school. You know, because um, you're able, you're just kind of getting through your bachelor's degree, just maybe two or three classes at a time right now, right? Because you're still working what at least forty hours a week, and have been right because you're. You've been helping out your family economically this whole time, and um, yeah. yeah, that's the one of the thing. Um, I don't really, really focus on looking how many hours that I work a week, because if I count it, it's more than forty hours a week. Because there is a people in the community who don't speak English, yeah. and uh, we have they have to call someone who speak English, someone who look like them, some someone who they can trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes you don't have a limit. <laughs> right, so you're getting calls all, yeah. You can help them. Yeah. So it's more than that because sometimes they don't have a choice. No, the fact not. that I remember when I came here, I didn't have anybody who speak my language. And I was trying to navigate to get someone to help me. I know the feeling hmm. of need when somebody need help. Do you, do you ever think that when you were helping someone, when you answer that phone call, when you were running your tutoring program, um, do you ever, does it ever occur to you that you may be, um, that others will experience you as being part of God's grace in their lives? That through your loving action that you are pointing the way to God for others? So honestly, what I can say is uh, God give me the strength because even though like I have a lot of stuff to do, I sometimes ask myself how even I get the time to help these guys because mm -hmm. I got a lot of stuff in my plate. But the fact that I'm able to figure it out and the plan and uh, go and support them on what they need, I think that's God support. God is working in me 
in order to help them out because I don't even know how I'm planning my plans yeah. because I, I got a lot of stuff. Sometimes like I work at night, I, I, I do night shift and people have an appointment. Some people have an appointment like at 8 a.m. <laughs> and I have to drop them out to, yeah. the, to the appointment. They got to see the specialist and sometimes they don't provide them with, like transportation. Right. And that's a difficult for them. But the fact that I'm able to get off work without even being tired and having those strengths and drop them to the hospital, I mean, that means a lot. And I always thank God for that because mm. it is a lot of God is giving to me. It is a lot of God is providing to me in my life. So maybe God's giving you the strength for doing that. Yes, correct. That's cool. So totally fine if you're not willing, but would you be willing to share just some of your thoughts, feelings, um, in these last couple months as our nation has come to a greater um, awareness or at least paying attention or more people are finally paying attention to um, the racial oppression and racial injustice that so many have experienced for so long. What what comes to your mind? Like what have you been thinking or feeling? Um, anything you'd like to share from your own personal experience um, with us? Yes. Um, I remember when I was in high school, I didn't really pay attention on it that much because I was new to this country. And um, I didn't really know what is going on. And they tried to teach us about it. But I used to know it like it's a part of history. It's not happening. But a couple of friends, um, that I used to hang out with in high school, some of them, they got arrested. And they used to tell me about them being arrested and, and I never I never take it serious. I thought maybe they just did something and that's the reason why they got arrested. But I finalize is a, a very serious issue. Um, when I got a job close to the border, and they profiled me, I'm from Haiti. Hmm. Yes, and uh, that's when I start reflecting on it, you know? I used to think it's an issue that like, you can just tell someone I don't speak English and then you can get away from that. Mm -hmm. But does it involve a language at all? But one thing that I can say about that is um, it is, it is happening and, uh, it is a big issue, but we need to welcome God in our hearts. And the more we get to know God, the more we're going to change. Mm -hmm. Um, because God does have race. We all equal. And uh, if we understand that, like God created all of us and uh, we, really welcome God to our heart, I think that is, that is not impossible. That's something that I would say about it. Yeah, help us, God. Yeah, I, I appreciate you mentioning, um, you know, in high school, starting to learn more about some of the history of how African Americans have been treated in this country. Um, what is it like to then um, be sort of eight years into the history of this country yourself but then i assume you have often experienced being sort of put together with others who have had a much longer history and their family members have had a much longer history here but then others from the outside kind of sort of think you're all sort of the same um does that ever kind of strike you as problematic or complicated um i don't know does that make any sense or um, um Part of me being here for eight years, um, the history itself, I have everything on it. And uh, and uh, what I think is, is very, I don't know, is we're never gonna change what already happened. Mm. But we can control our present and our future. Mm -hmm. So, I do 
like the fact that people are speaking out about these issues and I do believe change is coming. It does have to come fast, but the more people speak about it, the more change is gonna come. Because in order to bring change, it doesn't happen overnight. It's gonna take time, mm -hmm. you know? It's like seeing God's miracle. You might sit down, you have issues, in your family, with your friend, and you're asking God to help you out. But it doesn't happen right away. And I think the more you believe that God is gonna get you away from it, the more is gonna happen in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you're being positive yeah. on what you are doing. And that's what I think what is happening right now um, the fact that people are being positive, I believe change is on the way. Hmm. It just, I just really appreciate that, and especially given your own story that you have experienced and your family has experienced God's work and grace working out through years and years, right? So not just the eight years since you've been here, but all the years you were in a refugee camp. Um, that, you know, I think we all sort of wish that God would work faster sometimes, but but God works and is with us still and is present with us and works towards our redemption and rescue. And um, just when you have that hopefulness, it gives me hope that um, that God is still with us in these current struggles. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. And also, I just want to add one more thing. Please. Um, when I come to the U.S., I used to think like, after I get here, maybe two days, three days, maybe one week, I will speak English good, without having any issue. Yeah. But again, it doesn't work like that. You know, uh, God is work is God is work, and you need to have faith, and that's what I have been blessing myself into it. Even though, like, I have a lot of challenge. Sometimes I try to speak to people. Sometimes I forget what I'm gonna say. Yeah. It's not like I don't want to say anything. Mm. It's the fact that this is not my first language. Sure. And I got other language that I can speak well. But sometimes I don't get to get those people that speak the same language as I do speak to speak to them. And I pray. I pray to God all the time to help me out, to navigate right. through the system because it's not easy. I appreciate that um, comparison with kind of learning a new language because as we all know, like it doesn't happen overnight. Language learning takes a lot of work, a lot of work. And um, maybe that's also a good reminder that um, we can trust in God and God's faithfulness and presence and what we see before us as individuals, as communities, as a country, takes a lot of hard work. And um, there's no sort of shortcut around that. Um, and that's something I've learned from you too, because you're just one of the hardest working people I know. Hmm. Well, I, I'm grateful for you, Joseph. Is there anything else that you wanted to add tonight or um, anything else you'd like to talk about? I'm really excited because you're getting married soon at St. Luke's. So that's going to be in August. And um, can't wait to spend some time with you and Tiba to start talking about that. Yes. Um, I'm grateful to God. have helped me to find my, my love of my life. And uh, I don't know what to appreciate to God. Because you have done a lot mm -hmm. to my life. Mm -hmm. And he's still doing a lot to my life. So... Uh, despite that, there is also challenge in life as well, but I also, I'm also thankful to God because I'm fighting those challenges, you know, yeah. doesn't, the challenge doesn't keep me down. Um, I feel I'm on top of those challenge because of God's help and I pray and I see God is working in my life. Mm. That's what I can say. Thank you. 
Well, um, should we say a final prayer? Would you like to offer the, the final prayer for us? Um, sure. Okay. I can pray. But right. Can I pray in Swahili? Please. Please do. Okay. No problem. Um, Sote ili Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks again, Joseph, and um, blessings. Really grateful for your presence in our life. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course.